What's up, fam? Bro, pick radio. Hey, we putting it down. Look, I just want to touch bases with you for a minute. I'm on the subject, man. On my mind. I, I just got to speak on it. And it actually inspired me to do this particular show. Right. Now, it was a young guy who came to Houston from Chicago. He was a jeweler. And he had somehow got murdered. And, you know, some known celebrities were around the scene, but came out and said that they had nothing to do with the untimely death of this young 29-year-old male who was conducting business he was doing trade and the reason why I wanted to do this show and I titled it From Ghana to America because I wanted to prove that the majority of the slaves that came from Ghana to the Americas were Muslims and also you can see that in that movie uh, uh, with Viola Davis, The Woman King. But I also want to show how we as a people respected a craft or someone who was conducting business. Right, That was um, something to be honored. Rarely um, did you have people laying and waiting to attack someone who's coming from a different area to do trade. And I'm only saying this to show you the time that we living in right now. And I'm also going to give you a vision, a view, a history of a time prior to now. Right. Check this out. Now, this is this is coming from the uh, Ghana. This is coming from Britannica, the historical West African Empire. Says Ghana, first of the great mid- medieval trading empires of Western Africa, 17th through the 13th century. It was situated between Sahara and the headwaters of Senegal and Niger rivers in the area that comprises now southeastern Mauritania and part of Mali. This is our, this is our Moors. Ghana was populated by the Sonki clan of Mandi speaking people who acted as intermediaries between the Arab and the Aminza Berber Muslims, salt traders to the north and the producers of gold and ivory to the south, right? The Aminza um, is A-M-A-Z-I-G-H, right? The empire should not be confused with modern day Republic of Ghana. We to see uh, we gotta understand the the history before slavery. Cause at that time there was no Nigeria. That was named with an eighteen ninety seven by a white woman. But prior to that it was different names, different tribes, right? Because oh my god. Osiris, there we go. Different names, different tribes. The reason why I bring up Osara is because they cut him up in 13 pieces, pieces. Some say 12, some say 11, right? But that was a, just an act of to confuse you so you couldn't remember who you are, where you came from, and no one would be able to put us back together again. But that love of that woman for the black man put their life on the line to set things back in motion. That's the, that's the story. That's how I go down, right? An unconfirmed tradition dates the origins of the kingdom to the 14th century. 
Nothing is known of the political history of Ghana under its early kings. And you may ask, well, why am I talking about Ghana? Because most of the slaves came from West Africa, Ghana, to the Americas. This is a history of things that took place. And just bear with me for a minute. The first written references to the empire are those of Arabic geographies and historians from the 8th century. And it seems certain that by 800 Ghana had become rich and powerful, called Wagadu by its rulers. It derived its more familiar name from the king's title of Ghana. The king was able to enforce obedience from lesser groups and to exact tribute from them. Much of the empire was ruled through tributary princes who were probably the traditional chiefs of these subject clans. The Ghanaian king also imposed an important export tax on traders and a production tax on gold, which was the country's most valued commodity. Right. So a person traveling to do business in the business of gold dealing or jewelry, gold, copper, silver, platinum, have you, that was normal, normal business to do, right? That wasn't anything unusual, right? Now, according to the 11th century Spanish era chronicle, he would, um, he would, he's like a scribe. He, he record the history. Abu Abiyat al Bakari. Now, it says, according to the 11th century Spanish era, why? Because the black Moors were speaking Spanish, right? They had conquered uh, Spain, um, Portugal, uh, parts of Italy, Rome, and the whole nine. But let's keep going. Ubayyad al Bakari, the king. Welcome to his capital, many of the northern African traders of the Sahara, who after the Arab conquest in the 8th century had been converted to Islam. In the course of Ghana's history, the capital was moved from one place to another. That the 11th century has been tentatively identified by archaeologists as Kumba or Kumba Sali, 200 miles North of modern Bamako, Mali, right? Mali, we know, hails the famous Massa Musa. The principal Rayasan III of the empire was the, was the desire to control the trade in gold, right? Which had led the nomadic Amazaga people, right? Okay, the amazing God peoples of the desert to develop the Western Trans-Saharian caravan road, right? Gold was secured often by mute barter at the southern limits of the empire and was conveyed to the empire's capital where a Muslim commercial town developed alongside the native city. There the gold was exchanged for commodities the most important of which was salt that had been transported southward by northern African caravans. As Ghana grew richer, it extended its political control, strengthening its position as an uh, in, in, interpot by absorbing lesser states. It also incorporated some of the gold-producing lands to its south and such South Saharan cities to the north North, a famous market that has since disappeared was Adagost, A-U-D-A-G-H-O-S-T. Ghana began to decline in the 11th century with the emergence of the Muslim Almoravids, which is A-L-M-O-R-A-V-I-D-S, a militant confederation of the Sinai and other Amazing, amazing guy, A M A Z I G H, groups of the Sahara who combined a holy war 
to convert their neighbors. Abu, Abu Barka, the leader of this movement, Southern Wing, uh, took Atagos in 1054 and after many battles, seized Kumba in 1076. This is showing you that, okay, the there was dissension between Muslim factions in Ghana. You know, this is in this is in the, the 1076. We know the slave ships started hitting the waters in the 1500s. We know that the the fight fighting had already been started to uh, uh, develop between uh, the people in Ghana prior to slavery. So when they say, "Well, uh, y'all sold your own people into slavery," whatever. The fighting had been going on so long that they were selling captives of, of 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 prisoners of war, but they didn't understand the depth in which the slavery, the brutality of the slavery that was taking place in the Americas. The Almoravids' domination of Ghana lasted only a few years, but their activities upset the trade on which the empire deepened and the introduction of their flocks into an arid agricultural terrain initiated a disastrous process of desertification. The subject peoples of the empire began to break away, and in 1203, one of these, the the Susu, occupied the capital in 1240. The city was destroyed by the Mandi Empire, San Diete, and what was left of the Empire of Ghana was incorporated into his new Empire of Mali. Why did I just read you all that, right? right. One, it's to show you that, I'm sorry, a form of Christianity that was given to the slaves in America purpose was to separate the people from their I don't want to use a I don't want to use a, a less of a word it was to separate the people from their mores from how they conducted business from the self love of self from the vision of the community as a whole. And when I say community, I mean whatever tribe you were part of, your vision was to elevate your community. Now, prior to, think about it, prior to the 1500s, when they put the slave ships in the water, Europeans going in and out of Africa. They studying. They seeing what makes the people tick. What what do the people draw themselves to? What do the people like? What do they cherish? How do they love one another? How is their mating process on how they get married and carry on their family lineage? At the same time, they're deriving a plan on how to break all of that up in order to make a slave physically strong but mentally weak. It's science and a game at the same time. So, what happened? What happened? We we're so busy fighting one another till it took someone to say, hey, we got to stop selling our people because today, yeah, we still strong. But as we continue to keep selling our people, we'll be weaker and weaker and it'll be easy for them to come and just take us all conquerors, and that'll be the end of our rule. So 
the woman king symbolized that. But now the reason why I didn't have a problem with a female leading and kicking men's asses is simply because if you have vision and your vision is for the whole and you put your word and your life on the line for what you see, then let's go for it. Because you're not doing a selfish act. Okay. Now, back to young brother coming out of Chicago. Same thing, traveling. Gold jewelry salesman. One thing you got to understand, one thing you got to understand, before I get to the other point right, when you young and say you don't travel much outside of where you grew up and you start traveling to different cities, right? It's something in you say, well, I, where the people at, where the black neighborhood at? I want to go see the people, right? And it feels good going into these different cities and communities because you come to see your people. You want to see what they look like. What's going on? How y'all doing? You know, man, what's the new flavor? So, you know what I'm saying? In the back of your mind, you don't think I'm coming down here to get killed. Right. You coming down here to almost see lost, lone, kift and kin. You want to be around them. You want to party with your people. You know, you some say you, some people got it twisted when they say, uh, you got, when they criticize people for being punished for having a good heart or being naive or not recognizing where you at. But, yeah, we all come from the hood, so we, we know the game, but sometimes it's like, man, it's good to see. You know, it's so much here where I'm from. It's good to get out the area and go somewhere where I can relax. But I want to relax around my people. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder and mess around and have to get hit in the head. You see what I'm saying? And point two that I'm trying to make is the reason why I, y'all always hear me say, Mr. Farrakhan said this, the Nation of Islam does this, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches this, is because within those teachings and lessons and structures lies how we used to do business with each other, peaceful, and we had a system of accountability. If something did go wrong, somebody's coming to check and see what the hell is going on. Because if you don't have those checks and balances in place, everything is chaotic and there's nothing left. Nobody values anything. And then you you cease to justify your existence. You see how that work? So sometimes you have to go back in history and bring things forth so you can understand the workings of things and how things shaped itself or how it shaped itself out of of what it was prior to and how it became that way today. So, yeah, can you rebuild? Look, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. He was so many pieces, he was cracked up. Yeah, all the king's horses probably could put him back together again, right? All the king's men, they couldn't do it either. But you know who can do it? The love of that woman. Because the love of that woman's concentration on a thing from instinct and intuition can see the pieces and how to put it together. Because she can't survive without he, and he can't survive without she. You dig what I'm saying? 
So, we got to put this thing together and understand the benefit of unity. Verbal Peak Radio. We are. I'm acting bad. I'm off the Gulf Coast. I'm feeling glad. Cruise control on the boat. Ancestors was more, so I'm feeling it all. Hey.